Spaghetti bridges. These unique small scale structures commonly composed of spaghetti strands and glue are used all around the world to promote innovative thinking and allow participants to develop a practical understanding of essential structural engineering concepts. In this particular case, a Warren Trust spaghetti bridge has been designed, modeled, constructed and tested as it was believed that this structure would make the best use of the valuable information, resources and key structural engineering principles that have been presented and taught throughout the University of South Australia's Structures 1 course. The geometric application of right angled triangles within the structure enabled for the construction of a light yet strong bridge that comfortably adhered to the 200 gram weight limit, achieved the required span of 350 millimeters and ultimately resulted in a high weight to failure load ratio. Furthermore, the truss design was selected as it was deemed to be efficient to construct when compared to other designs given the limitations of the permissible construction materials, being only spaghetti and Sealy's quick superglue. The truss design also incorporated the application of recommended shorter web-like members which were used to mitigate the risk of bridge failure due to the weakness of spaghetti members under compression. The final design of the spaghetti bridge shown in the isometric drawing had a span of 370mm, a width of 50mm and a height of 72mm and was constructed from two parallel top cords, two parallel bottom cords, 24 tie members, 10 vertical column members, 12 struts in total which were used for bracing and two additional struts at the centre of the bridge to provide extra support at the loading point. A lot of research and effort went into the design, modelling and construction process of the spaghetti bridge. This process ended up taking several days to complete and involved the following steps. 1. The initial testing and familiarisation of specified construction materials, being spaghetti and Sealy's Quick Superglue. 2. Developing an innovative solution to a construction material bonding problem that was encountered in step 1 by blending spaghetti to create small granules and applying it to spaghetti pieces to form stronger bonds. 3. Researching and sketching a variety of spaghetti bridge designs. 4. Further material and bond testing through small scale load testing. 5. Officially selecting to design and construct a Warren Truss spaghetti bridge based on all of the preliminary findings and aforementioned justifications. 6. Preparing full-scale plan and elevation drawings of the spaghetti bridge design. 7. Using space gas software to model and complete pre-construction load testing on the initial spaghetti bridge design. 8. Engineering and applying an innovative structural engineering design modification based on the results of the space gas model load testing analysis. This involved the development of the seven-strand reinforced spaghetti members, which is shown in the isometric drawing and these were integrated into the design to improve the structural integrity of the bridge, especially under compression. 9. Referring to full-scale design drawings to mark up, cut and prefabricate reinforced members required for construction. 10. Referring to full-scale design drawings to set out all of the individual members required for construction. 11. Completing the construction of two entire spans of the spaghetti bridge by applying Selly's quick superglue and spaghetti granules to create joints and form the structure. 12. Finalizing the construction process by bonding all strut members, including the two load supports, to the parallel top and bottom cords through the application of Sally's quick superglue and spaghetti granules. 13. Waiting for all of the joints to set and fully strengthen before testing the spaghetti bridge under load. 14. Weighing the spaghetti bridge to ensure that it was under the 200 gram weight limit. 15. Completing the load testing procedure and recording the results. The failure load prediction of the spaghetti bridge was calculated using Young's modulus for spaghetti which is approximately 5000 megapascals or MPA. This value was multiplied by 7 as there are 7 strands in each reinforced spaghetti member in the bridge which produced a value of 35000 MPA. The 35000 MPA was then divided by the span of the bridge in millimetres to work out how many megapascals of pressure each millimetre of the structure could support before it failed. This came in at 94 MPA, which was then divided by 10 MPA per kilogram in order to get a predicted failure load value of 9.4 kilograms and load to weight ratio prediction of 65.7 times the self weight of the bridge. The final weight of the Warren Truss spaghetti bridge structure was 144 grams and the failure load of the bridge was 9 kilograms in the negative y direction, resulting in a failure load prediction accuracy of 95.7% and a weight to failure ratio of 62.5, which was also 95.7% accurate. The cause of failure for the Warren Truss spaghetti bridge was due to individual member failure of the supporting struts, 
from being brought out of equilibrium and placed under compressive overload at the point of loading where the hook device was attached to the deck of the bridge. This result was unsurprising as a load testing analysis of the space gas model clearly showed that the bridge would fail from the compressive overload of the individual members in the centre of the span where the load was being directly applied. What is astonishing however is that there was no apparent deflection in the remaining structure at the point of failure. This led fellow university colleague Travis Lodge to believe that the spaghetti bridge was capable of supporting a significantly higher load if it were not for the load bearing struts failing under compression. With this statement in mind, perhaps the structural engineering modification of additional reinforcement to the members at the loading point would allow for a greater load to be supported if there was an opportunity to retest the model. Travis was also in agreement that the space gas software not offering spaghetti as a construction material when modelling likely resulted in an unrealistic analysis of the bridge under load prior to construction. However, analysing the space gas model through the application of negative loads in the y direction to the nodes and members in the centre of the bridge proved to be very beneficial as this testing resulted in a clearer understanding of what would likely cause the spaghetti bridge to fail. This ultimately resulted in a far more accurate prediction of the failure load for the spaghetti bridge model, meaning that the application of the space gas software was highly effective as it ultimately resulted in a far more accurate prediction of the failure load for the actual spaghetti bridge model. In conclusion, the design, construction, modeling and testing of the spaghetti bridge has developed a deeper understanding of structural engineering and the processes that are involved to ensure that a structure is capable of safely supporting all loads that will be applied to it. The spaghetti bridge project has also allowed for key structural engineering principles and theoretical concepts including structures, loads, static analysis, reaction forces, truss analysis, truss design and truss member strain to be practically applied and explored in a tangible yet small scale scenario. The highly valuable experience and understanding of the key structural engineering concepts and principles that have been gained through this spaghetti bridge project can now ultimately be taken forward and applied to relevant real world construction projects.